Okay, so new car reveal. Um, anyone that's seen the last A Bath video um, or has checked it out on Instagram <clears throat> will have seen uh, that I've bought a Corsa SRI. So I thought I'd start this one off on the inside um, and just kind of give you a quick overview of what we've bought. So it is a 1.4 SRI, uh, 64 plate, so 2014, 64. We have Hopefully you can see that, 54,260 miles on the clock. Um, the battery in this is pretty much dead. So I've just got my charger out and after I've done this video, I'm gonna whip the battery out and stick that on charge and see if we can recover it. If not, <clears throat> we'll have a look online and we'll get another one ordered. Um, the interior is actually, it's a little bit mucky, but it's quite nice. Uh, there's no kind of tears in the seats or anything like that. I quite like the look of them with the, the black with kind of the red edging. So that's really, really nice. Um, got obviously CD player, all the, the standard stuff, um, air conditioning on this one as well. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm quite happy with the purchase. There is a catch with this one though. It came with two keys, which is really good. The battery is completely flat, so I can't turn it over. In fact, all it will do is illuminate the dash. Um, and there was another problem with this when it got dropped off, which I had to fix last night, and the fact that the driver's door would not open. So yeah, if you got you wanted to get in, you had to un, uh, open, luckily it was all unlocked when it got here, you had to open up this door and then basically lean over to, to pull the handle and then the door would open. Um, and after a little bit of research, I found out that all it needed to get it to work was to re-grease this little hole here. So basically when you lock it, there's a pin that moves up and down. So when you pull the handle, it must manually pull that pin up and it had enough <clears throat> ability to do it. Um, so all I did, I looked online, um, there was quite a good video uh, from a girl that had the same issue where when they locked the car, the door would lock, but then it wouldn't unlock. So I just sprayed a ton of WD-40 in there. I don't think you can still see, there's still some remnants on the outside and that seemed to cure the issue and then I could lock it with the key which also needed a fair bit of WD-40 on it. So now we're outside, let's have a look at what we've bought. So like I said before, 64 plate Corsa SRI. Around the back we've got no damage. We have on this side 217 inch alloy wheels. I can't get in the boot yet, so I'm hoping that because it's got the space saver or the spare on the front there, that the missing wheel is in the boot. So as soon as we get that battery charged, we'll have to have a look and find out. There's a couple of marks on this door just here. So they are slightly deeper than what I think we'll polish out, but we can have a go at that and see what we can do to tidy it up. <clears throat> and from the photos that we're bidding on, sorry, it went, okay, go from the photos when I was bidding on this, um, it looks really, really clean and tidy. There's an outline here, I don't know if you're picking up on the camera, of a, well, I'm gonna guess a learner plate. So someone use this as a learner car with one of those magnetic plates on there and it's kind of dulled that section, but that should polish up okay. Um, front end, we're missing a toe eye and I can't find it in the car yet. So maybe that'll be in the boot. <clears throat> and then we have this. So in the photos on Copart and off, flash run up in the corner in a second. That damage was not there. And the whole car looked relatively clean with no mud on it in the photos, but this has clearly got mud on it. Now my thoughts are, what's happened is those whacking great big um, forklift loaders that they have in the Copart yard, I think has reversed into this with its tire and it's crumpled all down this wing. So I've emailed Copart straight away. I've got photos of this when it was picked up from the yard before it left the yard. And it's quite a good idea to do that if you're buying cars. The bumper, I think will go again because it's just this corner and the clips all seem to be okay. <clears throat> but this wing now needs to be replaced. Looking online, if you buy one with this bit of trim, which is like for the SRI and I think the VXR version, if you buy the wing with the trim, about 125 quid. If you buy a standard Corsa wing, and I'm going to guess this is a standard Corsa wing just with that bit of plastic trim on it, 
they're about 60 quid. So we're going to take this off and see if that trim just sticks on and we can replace that and get one of those ordered. But I'm not going to do anything with that until we know if this car runs. <clears throat> so again, we've got an X on the top of the uh, windscreen there, which means it was an insurance sale. And when the sun's on it, I don't know if you can see that, it's quite a nice metallic black. So, yeah, other than that extra damage, I think we've got quite a tidy little car here. Now, <clears throat> I'll reveal the price at the end of this video, and I will reveal the price at the end of this video. Um, if that engine runs, or only needs something minor to get running, and I can replace that wing, this stands to be the cheapest car I've bought from Copart to date and could turn out to be quite a good percentage profit on any car I've ever bought before. <clears throat> so yeah, let's uh, crack on and see what we can do about that battery. Right, see if we can figure out what's going on with this. She's the head towel, the bonnet up. Okay, so I've already taken the battery out and put that on charge. Well, that, char that battery doesn't seem to be doing very well, so I have bought a new battery. So let's get that fitted. Right, so now we've got power, let's see if we can get in the boot. <laughs> right, interesting. What have we got in here then? So we've got a jack and that. And let's hope under here. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Yeah, it's completely flat, but we have actually got the wheel, which is brilliant because that means I think it's just a flat tire. Which means we can get that swap back over. Oh, thank goodness for that. That's going to save us some money. I'm having to buy a alloy wheel. What a result. It looks like you can put the parcel shelf, sorry, the boot floor higher in this one as well. Anything else in here? Right, okay. So we've got a free hat. Okay, about. Ooh. 
Ooh, beautiful teacup. Won't be using that. Anything else down there? No. Okay. So, so far, unfortunately, no service history. Let's have a look underneath the passenger seat. So in these cars, I'm not sure if you're aware, but obviously you've got a glove box, which in this case has got a touch-up pen in, which is quite handy. And the locking wheel nut, which is really good. Half a pen. Behind here, I think it's a fuse box. Yep. And then, I don't know if you're aware, but under here, what's this? Right, so, they obviously have this little drawer in the courses. Uh, owners, information, quick reference guide and entertainment system. So unless the service info goes into the owner's manual, which it does on some cars, I don't think we've got the service book. And then looking at that, no, I don't believe we do. Okay, so let's put those back in there just for the moment. Is there anything else in here? Nothing else in there. So I think we're out of luck when it comes to the service book. I think we are just looking at whatever we can uh, see. And to be fair, on the MOT history, it's had MOTs every few thousand miles. So I don't think this car has done, like the Abarth really, I don't think it's done very many miles each year. It's just been kind of used as a run around. Okay, so I think the next step is to figure out if there's any error codes. I'm fairly convinced after trying to turn the engine over that it's the starter motor not engaging but before we do anything else I just want to run a diagnostic on it. Now this is the diagnostic tool I use called Think Diag. They don't sponsor this or anything like that, it's just the one I use, it's quite good. Um, I think it's about £80 a year subscription but you can do tons of stuff with it. You can program keys, all sorts of bits and pieces. So I went to put that into the ODB tool uh, socket down here and it don't fit because it's too big so I had to buy an extension cable. So let's get that plugged in and see what we can find. Okay, so we've got the diagnostic tool all plugged in and I'll show you this as we go along. So we need ignition on. So first off, all system diagnostic. And the nice thing with this is it will go through um, and do a VIN decode. Okay, so the nice thing with this is as soon as it detects a different vehicle, it'll actually go through and download the specific um, diagnostic software for that particular model. So you haven't got to install all of them. Um, so in this case, it's Opal or Vauxhall, same thing. So we just let that download. Okay, so we've completed our scan and we've got 13 codes on the car. So I'm gonna guess that most of these are because the battery was completely dead. Um, Let's have a look at a couple. So let's have a look at anti-theft warning system. Let's go into that one. Okay, read fault code. Circuit high, low voltage, low voltage. Canvas communication malfunction. Okay. So what we're going to do is do a clear, do a report. This is quite a good thing with this. So you can hit report and it will do a report on absolutely everything. And then it saves it so we can go back and review anything rather than going through each individual code. So, just updating a report. Okay, so we now will have saved a report on the car, so we can do clear DTCs, let it go through and do that. There we go. 
So we definitely know we've got a tyre fault because one of the tyres is flat, if not two. But that's looking promising so far. Okay, so the only one that's left is tyre pressure monitor, which we expected. Let's just double check, read fault code. Yeah, present. So now we've done that, let's try turning it off and give it like 10 seconds. Definitely sounds like the starter motor is just spinning and not engaging. So one benefit is we do have three quarters of a tank of fuel and it's only done 54,000 miles. So I think it's safe to say this is just a starter motor. Now we could test this by giving it a bump, but I don't think the wife and George pushing the car will give it sufficient speed. So what I'm gonna do, because I don't have time to get this starter motor replaced myself, um, I might message Josh who delivered the car because he's actually a mobile mechanic and uh, just see how much it would cost for him to fit and order a starter motor for me for it. What I'm gonna do in the meantime is just try and take some photos because I know there's two different types of starter motor for this particular car. And it'd be good to know exactly which one he needs to order. So I'll go away and do that. If it's a ridiculously large amount of money for it to fit it, then we'll probably have a crack at doing it ourselves. But I think just from a speed point of view of trying to get this one running and turn it around, because this is what I'm gonna call hopefully a quick flip so that we can get this one sold, get some money in the bank account and then buy something else a little bit more interesting. Um, we know that the alloy wheel is in the boot, so that's good. So we'll go and take that over and get a new tire fitted on it and go from there. Okay, so like I said, I think we've pretty much ascertained that the starter motor is not turning properly. And that could be the only issue with the engine. So um, I've just messaged uh, Josh, he said, who does all my mechanic stuff and does the collection of the vehicles. Um, and he said to me that the starter motors for these engines are actually quite dear. So he's gonna go away, find out a price, and then he'll come back to me. So we'll probably won't find out what that is until the next episode. But as I promised, I told you that I would reveal the price of this car. So the recommended resale price that Copart put on for this particular car with this mileage, I think was around about four and a half thousand pounds. Now, as it's a Cat N, I always sort of take 20% off when I do a resale because it's got the N um, sort of against its name, which is a shame really because if that wing wasn't damaged and it was classed as an N because the engine didn't run, then yeah, I just see it as a bit of a strange one for the insurance. Um, there was no indication on there as to what the damage to the engine would be. Um, it wasn't marked as water or flood or anything like a lot of cars at the moment, but then, you know, that could be the case, but we won't find that out until um, we change the start motor out and we see if we can get the um, engine just to crank or even before we do that, we'll crank it manually. But yeah, so I paid 700 pounds for this car. And with the Copart fees, I think the total bill was 980 quid, which I have to say, I expected it to go for a lot more. The collection um, from Copart to delivery to the house was 60 quid. So currently as we stand with the battery, which is I think it was less than 60 quid delivered. So what are we? So we're about, we're under, we're sub 1200 quid on this car. And I reckon even if we had to replace the engine, there's still money in this, but let's hope that that um, starter motor replacement fixes the problem and go from there. So just want to end that there and say, thanks to everyone who's watching. Thanks to everyone who subscribed to the channel. I think, 
this time last month. I think we had a couple of hundred subscribers. We're now getting up to nearly a thousand, which is really, really good. Um, views on the videos are really good, but I say that subscriber count is still quite low. I think we've sort of got, I think 86% of people watching these videos haven't subscribed. So again, it, it helps me, it supports the channel. If you can just take two seconds before this video finishes and just hit subscribe, hit the little bell button so you get a notification every time I upload a new video, share it with your friends, share it on social medias. Um, if you're a member of a, a Corsa club and you want to kind of share this with the club, then go for it. You know, it's quite interesting, you know, as we go through the build, the things that we'll hopefully uh, discover and rectify, changing the wing, etc. Um, so yeah, really appreciate all the all the time you're taking to watch the videos and uh, I'll keep going with them as, as quickly as I can. Thanks very much for watching. And from me, George and the family, see you in the next one.